I have not heard of one example in Arizona where a business owner's religious liberty has been violated. That is Arizona Governor Jan Brewer discussing uh, her veto of the bill that would have allowed business owners to refuse to serve same-sex couples, citing the religious benefits as the reason. I sincerely believe that Senate Bill 1062 has the potential to create more problems than it purports to solve. Well, you see the response from those in support of her veto, and the fault lines continue to grow. Rather than putting this story to bed, it seems to have mobilized and impassioned people on both sides of the issue. In America, people should be free to live and work according to their faith. And that I don't see this as an attack insofar as, as those who believe in when you're protecting your right to A, practice your religion, and not engage in a contract. It's sending a message to progressive world or global based companies that this is not a, a friendly environment to work within or to have a business within. To me, what this says is Phoenix and Tucson and Flagstaff have non discrimination ordinances that protect LGBTQ people, and we in the House of Representatives and we in the Senate do not like that. My message to voters is to please come out and participate, exercise their voice at the ballot box. Of course, it's a simple, quick process, and it's terribly important in making sure that our citizens participate in electing the next person whose voice will represent theirs in the Texas Capitol. And what you saw there, first, uh, a variety of different comments from Arizonans, and then we went across state lines to hear from Democratic uh, gubernatorial candidate uh, in, in uh, the Lone Star State of Texas. All this a part of the political churn, we could call it, that uh, never seems to go away as we welcome you back to Americans Forum. Again, I'm J.D. Hayworth in uh, for John Bachman. And still with me, and I'm darn happy to have him, is Newsmax Magazine senior editor David Padden. Now, let's go to the Arizona situation first. Sure. And though the dust is settling, and that may be a questionable metaphor to use, the fault lines really have not changed. In the final analysis with the NFL, Major League Baseball, and corporations coming in, is this just an example of money talking? It's a couple of things, J.D. Certainly money played a big role. What you had was many major corporations, Chamber of Commerce, NFL, Major League Baseball, many organizations who were against this Senate Bill 1062 in Arizona. But we also have to remember we're still in a post-civil rights uh, era in America culturally. It's been 50 years, but 50 years down the road, there's still a lot of issues, still a lot of problems that we have culturally, socially. And the notion that people were not going to be able perhaps to go into a public place, a restaurant, sit down and have a meal because there was something about them that someone felt was objectionable, I think that that was just a bridge too far both for corporate America but also for a lot of civil America, frankly. Now, proponents of the legislation say that was not the intent. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to hear from Arizona sure. State Senator Al Melvin, who supported the bill and did not do an about face like many of mm -hmm. his colleagues. Yeah. Uh, they're saying that it wasn't the question of, of accommodation when people come in for service. Mm -hmm. It was a specialized service. For example, catering or photographing a, a same-sex marriage ceremony mm -hmm. and that in doing this, mm -hmm. the, the state essentially is telling people of faith there are places where you can exercise your mm -hmm. faith uh, in your house of worship, mm -hmm. in your own home, but don't you dare mm -hmm. bring it into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. is, is that a fair assessment in your mind? No, I think it is a fair assessment. I think anybody trying to say that this doesn't limit people's rights and, and, and perhaps based on their convictions, their religious rights, is not being realistic. Of course it does. What the progressives are saying and what corporate America also is saying is that in a larger context you have to let this happen <clears throat> because the social interest is greater. That's the argument on the other side. And again we will hear from State Senator Al Melvin who is also uh, <coughs> coincidentally running for the Republican nomination for governor ah. in the Grand Canyon State a bit later in our program. Speaking of candidates for governor, 
Wendy Davis, Democrat candidate for the governor of Texas, is hoping that her voice will be the one to represent Texans in Austin. Take a listen to what she had to say. My message to voters is to please come out and participate. Exercise their <coughs> voice at the ballot box. Of course, it's a simple, quick process, and it's terribly important in making sure that our citizens participate in electing the next person whose voice will represent theirs in the Texas Capitol. Uh, Davis, of course, currently a member of the Texas State Senate, gaining national attention back in June when she wore pink tennis shoes to filibuster for 11 hours on the issue of maintaining abortion in Texas. Those peaks, pink sneakers were the beginning of a firestorm of controversy surrounding the abortion issue in the Lone Star State. Now, Planned Parenthood's political operations are planning their largest ever campaign blitz for the midterm elections. The organization poised to dump millions of dollars into key races that could determine who ultimately controls Congress and, of course, who sits in the governor's chair in Texas. Again with Dave Patton. Dave, Planned Parenthood getting involved financially in races both for the Congress and at the state level, nothing new. But to the extent that they say now they're going to spend more than $18 million, what does this mean to Wendy Davis and her campaign in Texas? Well, it means she has a breath of life. Uh, she has perhaps a hope, J.D., but if you look at the polling numbers, it doesn't look good for Greg Abbott, her opponent, kind of a classic Republican from Texas, uh, did very well in his race to become the Texas Attorney General. In fact, carried about 64% of the vote. And the polls right now show Wendy Davis uh, down by about 11. So this is why we've seen a moderation in her position on abortion from the filibuster appearing to to support abortion on demand to a more Bill Clinton-esque uh, safe but rare position? Yeah, but it's not going to work. Ultimately, Abbott, I believe, will uh, be the Texas governor. So it will be Abbott succeeding Rick Perry. We'll see if that prediction holds, holds up come November. Thanks very much, Dave.